Hey everyone, this is Joe. I am the Digital Astronomer. Today, I want to show you the completion of a project that I started back in November. Some of you will be familiar with a video that I did a few weeks ago about imaging Messier 74, which is also known as the Phantom Galaxy. In that video, I had about two hours of total integration time and wanted to show you the capabilities of my Celestron 8-inch telescope coupled with the ZWO 533MC Pro camera and the Star Azonia 0 0.40 focal reducer. Since then, I have imaged a total of over 10 hours of data on this and the results have been incredible. So in just a moment, I want to tell you a little bit more about this fascinating galaxy and then show you the final results. But before I do, I'd like to ask you to do me a favor. If you have not subscribed to my channel yet, I want to encourage you to reach down and click on that subscribe button right now. My goal for 2021 has been to reach a thousand subscribers and I'm almost there. I have about 25 more subscribers to go before I top that thousand and you could help me. If you've enjoyed this, um, this, this channel and you've already subscribed, I want to encourage you to click on the like button, smash the share button and help me spread the word about my channel and continue to build it through 2022. With that said, let's take a pause and I'll be right back to tell you a little bit about M74. Okay, I'm in Stellarium, and I'll give you just a little bit of help in trying to identify where this object is located. You can notice here, I'm looking towards the southeast. Here is the constellation Pisces. And then if I zoomed in here, um, the Phantom Galaxy is just located off to the side of the star Alphurg. Now, Alphurg can be a little bit tricky to find in light polluted skies. So a good way to find it is just look for Hamel and Sheraton. These are two pretty bright stars and you can kind of find your way over then to um, Alphurg and then uh, find the Phantom Galaxy. Now, as I zoom in here, you'll notice that the Phantom Galaxy has a very low surface brightness. In fact, of all of the Messier catalog, M74 has the lowest surface brightness with the exception of M101. So it's the second dimmest object in, M, in the Messier catalog. Now, that makes it very difficult if you're trying to observe it visually. In fact, I have had no luck in my light polluted skies observing this just through the eyepiece. However, through the camera, things come out pretty nice. As I zoom in here, you'll notice that this is a great example of a large spiral galaxy. It's located about 32 million light years away, again in the constellation Pisces, and it is just slightly smaller than our Milky Way galaxy. If we were to go uh, and look at the diameter from this side all the way over to this side, it's about 95,000 light years. So just a little bit smaller than the Milky Way. Um, and uh, it is a beautiful example. In fact, it is sometimes referred to as the archetypal example of a grand design spiral galaxy. In other words, it has very, very clearly defined spiral arms. In fact, if we go over here, let me go over to Photoshop. This is the image that I took. And you will notice that those spiral arms are very prominent, very clearly defined. No guessing whatsoever at all on this particular object. Now, just for a second, let me go over and talk a little bit about how this image was made. And then I'm going to come back and talk about some of the details here. If I go over to Astro Pixel Processor, you'll notice that I stacked a total of 218 lights. These were three minute long subs and um, shot at a gain of 100 with an offset of 50. 100 is the um, 
Unity gain for the MC, uh, the ZWO 533 MC Pro, and, uh, gain, and of course the uh, offset is their recommended offset. I stack those with a master flat, a master dark, and a master dark flat. Each of these were made. I shot uh, 20 flats, 20 darks, 20 dark flats, and made the masters out of that. And you'll notice here, let me just kind of come over and I will show you very quickly. This was the initial stack. This was the initial stack made in Astro Pixel Processor. And you can see I've got a little bit of a gradient here. Um, I went ahead and came along and I cropped it. This is what the crop looked like. I took out the artifact, the uh, stacking artifacts from around the edge. Then I went in and did a little bit of an adjustment. I'm going to move this microphone here for just a second. Uh, I went over and did a background adjustment, took out the light pollution, ran the right light pollution filter. Uh, that makes an adjustment on the background. That got rid of some of the um, uh, gradient there. I also decreased, I didn't do quite as, uh, 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 a, as aggressive of a stretch. So let me just kind of show you what that looked like here. And uh, so I got it down to that. Then I went over and did a uh, star adjustment, uh, color adjustment, and this is basically what the picture that I took over to Photoshop looked like, okay? Now, when I went over to Photoshop, I did a little bit of a saturation adjustment and uh, did just a few a little adjustments here, and this is the image that I came out with. Okay, now let's go back in and talk about some of the details again of this particular um, galaxy. Um, Again, this is a galaxy that is part of a little bit of a larger group known as the M74 group, which also includes NG, uh, C660, UGC891, 1176, and 1195. And depending on where you read, there are various counts for the number of galaxies that are in this particular local group. Um, but that gives you kind of an idea. And this, of course, is the largest of those particular galaxies. Now, in recent decades, what's been interesting is, is that professional astron astronomers have observed three different supernovae inside of this galaxy. And that, uh, just to kind of give you an idea, a supernova occurs at the end of certain types of stars' lives. So depending on their mass and everything like that, certain stars, just before they collapse and either become a neutron star or a black hole, will brighten up incredibly. In fact, they will outshine and be more luminous than the rest of the galaxy put together and they become a supernova. And they've observed, they're kind of rare to observe, quite frankly, because you're seeing sort of the end of a star, uh, the very death throes of a particular star before they collapse. And there have been three of those observed in this one galaxy. Now, so we've seen the end of some of the stars in this particular galaxy, but we also see that a lot of stars are being born. I want you to notice, let me kind of zoom in here just a little bit. And you'll notice some of these patches of purple and red, some of these areas out in here. These are areas of nebulosity. Also, with uh, much larger telescopes, they have observed that there are clusters of very young blue stars. Now, what does that mean? Well, we have nebulosity and we have young blue stars. It means that new stars are being born in this galaxy. And so what we're able to see is this is a galaxy that really represents a, a very wide range of uh, stellar evolution and is a very fascinating place to look at. One of the things I like about this galaxy and about my image here is that I'm able to really see some of the dust lanes and some of this area around the core. So in all, I'm pretty pleased with this picture. One of the things I'm not very happy about is that I think I've got a little bit of star bloat. And um, some of these stars seem to me to not be perfectly round and that's probably a problem of how I'm guiding. I'm guiding this C8 with a 50 millimeter guide scope and a small ZWO guide camera using PHD2. Probably what I need to change over to is using an off-axis guider. Almost everybody will suggest using an off-axis guider with this setup. 
Unfortunately, I don't have one, so I haven't used it, but I think that would uh, probably improve some of these bloated stars. But in general, that's being a little bit picky. Basically, I'm really happy with this setup. I'm amazed by the sensitivity of the ZW0533 uh, camera. I love the fact that I don't have to remove any um, amp glow. I still use darks in order to get out some of the um, the noise. But if I go over back over here to Astro Pixel Processor and look at this for just a moment and zoom in you'll notice there's hardly any noise in this camera. It is really good. With just 20 darks, that's not a lot of noise. I'm very happy with this. I think this is a very, very good setup. I'm very happy with it and looking forward to doing a lot more of uh, Galaxy images during Galaxy season this year. I plan to take the uh, 0.40 focal reducer off. I'm going to take it off and put the 0.63 focal reducer back on, get a little bit closer up on some of these smaller galaxies and looking forward to getting a lot more images this winter. All right. Thank you for tuning in today. I hope this helped. Let's go back. Just take one more look at M74, the Phantom Galaxy. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, please remember, click on subscribe. If you liked it enough, share uh, it with your friends and click on that like button, uh, like button to help me uh, spread the word and uh, to build my channel. Thank you for tuning in today.